Have you found him? Neville Goddard, 15 September 1967. Tonight's subject is Have you found him? In this question, I'm asking if you've found the source, the cause of the phenomena of life. I can tell you from experience that he is a person as I am, as you are. Called the Father, he is the one of whom I speak tonight. I have met the Father. He embraced me and incorporated me into his body. So I wear not to the mortal eye, but to the spiritual eye, the human form divine, the body of infinite love. On this level, this statement sounds insane, but it is true. Tonight, I am going to try to show you how he will appear when you find him. In the wonderful poem by Robert Browning called Saul, Saul is demented due to an evil spirit which was sent from God. David, having been anointed and made the Lord's chosen one plays and sings to Saul, restoring him to perfect health. In the story, David prophesies the coming of the Messiah, saying, O Saul, it shall be, a face like my face, that receives thee, a man like to me. Thou shalt love and be loved by, forever, a hand like this hand shall throw open the gates of new life to thee. See the Christ stand. No one could have written this statement unless he had experienced it, but no one. Browning was raised in the environment where the matching of words and thought was an art in their practiced form, and being a poet he could tell of his experience so beautifully. Now I will tell you mine, for I know from experience that Browning's words are true. When you see David, you will see the face of the risen Lord. If you have not seen the risen Lord, for only the apostles see him, at which time they are incorporated into his body and sent. When you find David, Use your imagination and mature his face, and you will see the face of the risen Lord reflected there. David is the eternal youth who is buried in your mind, and when he comes forth and calls you Father, he will reflect your glory and bear the very stamp of your nature. May I tell you, when I looked at David, I felt I was the risen Lord. I am not the little garment I wear here, and neither are you. In the 27th Psalm, we are told to seek his face. My heart says to thee, Thy face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not thy face from me. I have found his face, yet I cannot take any credit for it. Having searched my entire soul, I cannot find anything that I have ever done to make me worthy to behold the face of the risen Lord. But when I was brought into his presence in the Spirit, I was incorporated into his body, into the one body to become the one Spirit, one Lord one God and Father of all. So I have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. The word Jesus means Jehovah, Saviour, 
That's all it means, and there is only one Saviour in the world. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour, and besides me there is no Saviour. Now let me share with you a wonderful experience of a lady who is here tonight. This lady is very much a lady, yet last spring she heard a voice within her say, You are David, my dear, and I want to love you with all of my heart. Then the voice proclaimed, I am God and I am you, fulfilling the tenth chapter of John. I and my father are one. And the second psalm. In this psalm, David is speaking, saying, This is the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. This lady was called David by one who proclaimed, I am God and I am you. I and my begotten are one. Now on the 24th day of May, two months after this fantastic vision, this is what she heard. I am God himself. I am he who brings you into this world and takes you out. I am, I am, I am God forever. I will never leave you. You are me, my son, my son, my son. I am speaking to you from the depth of me, and I know you, Virginia. I am, I am Jesus Christ, your world. In the first verse of the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, the Lord says, I have redeemed you, for I have called you by name. You are mine. When you reach the point where you are called by name, you are redeemed. No matter what she must experience in the time to come, she can always lean against this experience of hers and relate it to this parallel verse of scripture. I have redeemed you for I have called you by name. You are mine. May I say to all of you, if you haven't found him, don't despair. When I found him, it just happened. And if it happened to me, it will happen to everyone. But in this heavenly order, there are certain levels, as there are in this world. Back 30 years ago, I was called into the presence of the risen Lord in spirit. I was asked to name the greatest thing in the world, and I answered in the words of Paul, Faith, Hope, and Love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. At that moment, he embraced me. I was incorporated into his body, and then, since that time, I have felt no divorce from that body. I walk the earth as Neville, the garment I shave in the morning, but at night I assume my heavenly one. While walking the earth as Neville, I am just as normal as you are, yet I have never felt any estrangement from that spiritual body, for he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Since that day, back in 1929, I have done things you might say the Lord wouldn't do, but if anything is done, the Lord had to do it, because there is nothing but God in the world. So in this wonderful statement of hers, she was told, Jesus Christ is your glory. Described in scripture as the power of God and the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ is your glory and you are he. By his glorious power, all things come into your world. For your world is Jesus Christ. Now if your concept of Christ is smaller than the universe, then you don't know him, for this world in its completeness is created by and sustained by Christ. The being in the depth of this lady proclaimed the most profound thing when she was told, Jesus Christ is your world. He is, and he is you.
for it is you who brought everything into existence. The other day, I read this little statement of James Dean, one of the greatest astrophysicists of all ages. He said, On this planet, man cannot raise his hand and not disturb the father star. It is here that the drama is taking place. You cannot raise an arm, you can't think, without affecting the further star. That's how great you are, because God became you that you may become God. You are told in the first chapter of John, In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word Logos, translated word, is plan, and the plan itself is God. And the word became flesh and dwelt in us, and we beheld his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father. So the word which is God himself became flesh when he gave himself to you. That is the mystery of scripture. God actually became as you are, that you may be as he is. In the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, the Greek word en is translated among, but the word is within, as in the statement, within you stands one whom you do not know. It is not someone who walks among you, but who dwells within you. In the, the word en also means to give self wholly to. Emptying himself of his divinity, he took upon himself the form of a slave and became the obedient unto death, even death upon this physical cross of man. The body you wear is a cross upon which God is crucified and from which God will rise, taking you with him. Then you will know that you and he are one. I was sent to tell you the true story of the mystery of Christ. While we are here on this inferior level of awareness, we have lost sight of our Ma Maker. But I have been sent to tell you how the drama of Christ unfolds within you. As it is the Father's will that not one be lost, not one in my holy mountain. Paul tells us in his letter to the Corinthians that like in the army, there are various levels of awareness. He puts the apostles first, the prophets second, the teachers third, and the miracle workers fourth. Why he does this, I do not know. I do know that I used the words of Paul when the risen Christ asked me to tell them what was the greatest thing in the world, and after he embraced me and I fused with his body, I was sent with the words down with the blue bloods. People may think this has something to do with the social order, but the word means church protocol, the traditions of men, as opposed to the commands of God. The world is full of the traditions of men, which change as fast as they are created. Wanting to sell more fish, tradition dictated that it was a sin to eat meat on Friday. Now that tradition has changed and you are allowed to eat meat on Friday once more. The early fathers were all married, then one came along who was ignorant and wanted everyone to be as ignorant as he. So he made an order that they marry no more. Now the men are rebelling and it will take a few years before it will all be back to the way it was. These are the traditions of men while I was sent to fulfill the command of God. Christianity hasn't a thing to do with that which is made by the human hand. The church of scripture is the assembly of the resurrected. The resurrected are those who are incorporated into the body of the risen Christ and may I tell you, it is a body just as real as yours is now. Everyone will be incorporated into that one body, yet there are orders there just as there are here in this physical body. The eyes perform a function, the ear another, 
the nose another, as each perform their own special function. Paul takes eight, which is the number of Christ, and gives eight orders within the body. But what determines this order, I do not know. I only know that I beheld his face. He embraced me and incorporated me into his body. And when I found David, he was simply a young impression of the ancient of days I had beheld. That is why Browning made David say, O Saul, it shall be a face like my face that receives thee, a man like to me. Thou shalt love and be loved by, forever, a hand like this hand shall throw open the gates of new life to thee. See the Christ stand, and you know you cannot earn this experience. It is all grace, grace and more grace. So begin now to live a wonderful life and exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of everyone. And one day you will be called to enter that one body, and it will not matter whether you play the part of the teacher, the miracle worker, the helper, the administrator, or the speaker in tongues. If one is playing the part of the apostle, it is not because he earned it. It's a play, and the part he is playing was God's choice in the beginning, and before that, the world was. So learn to exercise your creative power by applying the law, or you may have anything you want. You want to be wealthy, you may have it. You want to be known, you may have that too. Anything you want, you may have. But when it comes to God's promise, it will be fulfilled. It is my hope that it is now, but don't think you can make it happen, you can't. But you will find him when you see David, and he calls you Father, and he will. For there is only one God and Father of us all who is above all, through all and in all. In the meantime, remember, everything is a state of consciousness. You want security? Then assume that you are secure, and things will happen, and you will bear the fruit of the tree of security. Get out of that state and its fruit will vanish. You may wonder what happened and think someone deceived you. The market went down or your product is no longer wanted. But you can only eat the fruit of security when you know you are a tree. Any state occupied bears its fruit and your world is forever bearing witness to the state you are in. But you will never find the cause of the phenomena of life until the David of biblical fame, who is my son, calls you father, and then and only then will you know that you and I are one. Now let us go into the silence. Thank you.